The bride's got a tail. Look at that. Isn't that cute? I look less eggish if I tilt my head like this. Damn, he has sass. Channeling Manchild with Miffy. been enjoying the videos i've been enjoying making them a lot i feel like it's a space where i don't really have many rules for myself right now going into starting a channel sometimes you get overwhelmed with feeling like everything should be consistent you should have a message you should have a brand but i don't really feel that way with youtube that much I hi hello it's raining i'm gonna go to work today and then I'm gonna watch the new Luca Guadagnino film, Challengers. Very excited. I love Luca's work. I get to come off work early today, so that's that's why I'm doing some something so festive, like watching a movie in the middle of the week. Ooh! I'm still reading the new Emily Henry. Funny story. I'm liking it a lot, actually. I think her characters are a lot more real in this, and they feel they feel like Nora Ephron characters, and I think that's why I love them so much. But as a physical read, I'm reading Hit Parade of Tears by Izumi Suzuki. Gotta get my sci-fi kick on, so we're gonna do that. As a bookmark, I'm using Magician's Navigation. I love it because you have Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl trap card. Love this. I think it fits so well with the cover. Okay, my... Tamagotchi is in purgatory, so I got to get new batteries for him. We're gonna do that too. And get a coffee to start the day, because I bought my cute tiny bag, and I don't have face for a thermos <laughs> in that bag. So, let's let's get this day started. Really just um, watch some, some tubes, uh, catching up on some vlogs. Okay, see y'all later after work. <laughs> Hey, how's it going? Just a quick update. I want y'all to know that my Tamagotchi is still dead. Will that show? It says low battery. And I spent like nine bucks on four batteries at a convenience store. I am never doing that again in my entire life. Thought my Tamagotchi was an emergency and wanted to put in the batteries yesterday, but I haven't done it yet. I'm just gonna go to Daiso next time, today. I feel so guilty about paying $9 for batteries that I'm gonna go to Daiso and spend a dollar on six. Anyway, ooh, updates. I watch Challengers. I think I've mentioned this before, but I love watching it at CGV because you get like fun gifts and stuff. And what I love mostly is that you get this thing called TTT, which stands for that's the ticket. And they do these like fun little ticket stubs for when you watch the movie. Look at that. We love our homegirl Zendaya. If you look closely, it like, it's a little shiny, and you see both the men that she uh, power plays 
and her sunglasses, so cool. Let me show you the back real quick. So it's that, and then there it is, so good. I don't know if that'll show up. Anyway, super cool. And then I got Zendaya, oof, so good. Oh. Challengers was a lot of fun, not Luca's best, a little too long, and the end felt a bit rushed and gimmicky in certain camera movements and edits that I was just like, really? Super stylish, of course. Luca, we all know who he is. We all know what he does. Call me by your name. You might have issues with it, but it's such a summer comfort watch for me. Just the entire aesthetic of summer in Italy is just so good. This was okay. I think it is a fun character study on all three counterparts. It's about a super cool pro pussy whipped <laughs> tennis player, Zendaya, and she leads on these two boys to sort of pull out the best of their abilities out of each other and then against each other. And it's just so, so fun. Zendaya is a powerhouse in this film and it definitely looks at power structures between men and women, as friends, in a relationship, in a marriage, uh, between friends. And it's just, oof, lots and lots of fun. Sex is foreplay and the mind games, the power plays in power structures is the erotic thrill of the entire film. Lots of, lots of cool fun. I'm about halfway through, what are we reading? <laughs> Hit Parade of Tears by Izumi Suzuki. This is so weird in that like Japanese sexually depraved kind of way, 70s and 80s. And it's a lot of fun. I am having a lot of fun with the stories. They feel a bit repetitive in that I feel like this could have definitely been fleshed out fully as like a novel if she really sat down and fully conceived it all. Most of the stories are about a sexy little thing and she encounters these like really strange men. One's a time traveler, the other one's like a nitwit, just like odd men left and right, turns the stalker, scary man stalker element on its head and converts it into something just strange and alluring. The first story is called My Guy and it's about a robot, her having sex with a robot. Her main characters always kind of feel the same. They're like nymphettes. And I just love the opening line uh, for the story. It goes, I wanted every man on earth to stop and look at me. It was an all-consuming task. I was no girl next door. I'll give you that. But it's a lot of work to walk around in five-inch heels, tripled up eyelashes and a miniskirt with a deep slit in the front. Mmm. Yum, yum, yum. But Izumi, I think, knew what kind of woman she was. She knew she was a hot sexy thing. I mean, come on, look at this. I didn't realize that in the French flaps, woof, y'all do you see that? Do you see that? Stunning. They, they're just like weird and fun, but yeah, definitely a pleasant read in between like other big reads. Right now I'm also reading, is it Weddings and Lies or Lies and Weddings? It's the new Kevin Kwan, the guy who brought you Crazy Rich Asians. And it's fun. It's basically Crazy Rich Asians 2.0. Just that it, it just has the same tone, same feel, almost same characters, high elites, and them spending money left and right, having fancy dinners, wearing fancy clothes, and having jokes that I think only rich people understand. So yeah, I'm having fun with that in between. I, I've been enjoying this. Oops, forgot to show you. I don't know if this footage will show up, before or after, I'm not quite sure how any of this will be edited. Um, so excuse me in post, but I went to Uniqlo and I tried these two articles of clothing last week. And I was like, let me just pull the trigger and get them. Cause I've thought about them for a few days and I, I want them and I got them. I got a Miffy shirt. I was like, this is cute as hell. Give it to me. And now I have it. Um, am I gonna wear it out? I don't know, I don't know because I am an adult and this is literally a children's, children's shirt. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna invest in my loser core element and be, be a man child. I'm a freaking man child. Anyway, channeling man child with Miffy. Thanks Miffy, thanks. So we did that and the J.W. Anderson spring summer collection dropped and I wanted new shorts. So I got these fun white shorts, mostly fun because of, I love the, I'm not holding these up properly and I'm so sorry. Wait, let me do, properly do this. I can clip this. There we go. Can you still hear me? I hope so. Okay. Um, anyway, fun. 
there I am. Okay, can you backtrack back to me? Thanks. They have this like fun drawstring element to them and the pockets are it's just a fun nifty detail. I hate when like pockets are just like, literally just like you dig your hand in. But this one, it goes in the sides like this, just fun. I'd love the stitching and the thickness of this, but a fun summer white short should do it. I think I'm gonna go for my mental health walk just cause the weather is actually super nice. It's like warm with a nice soft breeze. And then I was going to revive this, but not at 6 p.m. Cause that means there's just, I gotta feed it, I gotta take it out. And those are just responsibilities that I don't want to deal with right now. Cause I just finished work. Uh, this is me post work. You know what I realize? Having a Tamagotchi is fun in theory, but eventually it's a pet. It's a pet and you have to take care of it. It has needs. And I am already, sorry. I am already a needy person. I don't need more needs on top of me to deal with. Anyway, this is already super long and I don't even know if this will transfer nicely onto my little iPad that I edit all of this off of. So I'm gonna leave you here. Love y'all. I'll let y'all know what I do. Bye. Finally, you gotta hold on as tight as you can. Hang on to your love. There we go. <laughs> he doesn't want to look my way at the camera's way. Damn, he has sass. <sighs> Y'all, okay. let me know, do we like this towel? <laughs> yes, it's a towel. Do we like the towel as a throw blanket over the bed? Let me know, because we also got this. And I think it complements this very well. But the towel's from Karn Bolent. I just thought it was really fun. Like a fun blue with the blankets. But let me know. Let me know. Also, I have this space above my fridge that I felt like needed something. And I'm gonna use this as like a mini boudoir. I think I might need something like tea towel of some sort here. Some kind of placemat. Because the white is a little too stark. But put up my past lives poster. Love. And I think it goes well with my lamp. If anyone was ever curious, this is a lamp. It's coming along, I think. Just a quick update. I finally put up this poster by Annie Tung from like a summer ago when she did her exhibition in Seoul. We've got a Dean poster there. But yeah, there was like negative space here and I was like, I need something there.
Hi y'all, I'm so sorry. I forgot to debrief you. I just finished doing two pop-ups and now I'm gonna do this other pop-up because it's Pokemon related at the Seoul Lotte Tower. Real quick, let me give you the OOTD because I feel like I'm doing a bad job of like showing you. So let's, let's back up a bit. Got on Moon Sun, floral shirt, basic white tee. Rest and recreation jeans, and of course my mini Trader Joe's tote from my beloved subscriber. Thank you, thank you. Full 360 for you. There you go, how do you like that? I'm trying to be more comfortable filming in public, but like, I hate being that, that public nuisance. But here we are, in an alleyway, filming. Let's go. your boy Nate. I read books because reading is sexy and if you're not reading, you're not sexy. I look so eggish today and I wonder if it's the hair. Can I? I look less eggish if I tilt my head like this. God. Coffee. It's like my sixth cup of the day. Summer's here. It is so hot today. It's nice, actually, but it's like, it's getting close to shorts weather and I'm just like, I'm not ready. I'm not ready to be that vulnerable and show my legs. Okay, I told you all that I was gonna go to the Pokemon pop-up, but I ended up stopping by a cafe because my tummy was uh, needed to be filled. And I was just like, I'm just gonna get a cup of coffee with milk. I got a latte at Mardi Mercredi. So what is it? They sell bags and hats and clothes but they have this location that's just a cafe and it's two stories it's an odd space i don't know what they're planning to do with it i forgot if there was clothes on the first floor or not anyway it's like it was that time in the afternoon where it's just so warm that you get a bit delirious and then you're just like i need to like sit down because i'm fatigued hungry and i just can't focus so the coffee and then read a bit. Does anyone else read to sort of train, train the brain to create focus? Just me or am, am I just insane? I went to the Latte World Tower for the pop-up, but you have to reserve like a place in line and they were out of reservations for the day. So you couldn't even go in, which is so dumb because like there was so much space to shop and there weren't even a lot of people shopping. So I was just like, just let the people in, let the people shop. Like, don't you want my money or not? <laughs> so I think tomorrow I will try again. <laughs> I will try again. Cause I was looking at some of the stuff and I was like, that stuff is super cute. 
Is there something that I want? I don't know, we'll see. So I'll go again tomorrow, bright and early, 10.30, and it'll be even hotter tomorrow. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Although I did pick something up because they had gotcha machines in front of the pop-up store. Been loving my trusty Target spot dog. So cute. Oh yes, got a gotcha. Let's open it, little unboxing for ya. It is Psyduck. You can get a variety of Psyducks. There they are. There he is. Honestly, all of them are cute. I would have taken all of them, but it's a little wind up gut. Let me show y'all. Eh, eh, are you entertained? Okay, well, there he is. Uh, yeah, and then saw that there was the Glowny, Glowny, I don't know how to pronounce it. In Korean, I think it's Guroni. It's like the Korean Lululemon for girlies, and it's just like super basic. It's cute. I just love it from afar. I was so sad that I couldn't go to the pop-up, so I just like sat outside in red a bit, like in the shade. And yeah, we finished. We finished Hit Parade of Tears. Wow, this is so... So, so exquisite. I just love the weird nature that Izumi places us in. Let me read you three quotes that like totally encapsulates the running thread of all the stories in here. She'd been alone for quite some time. Alone, always. She slept alone. She woke alone. She idled away alone. There is this never ending sense of loneliness throughout the stories with a female protagonist who doesn't really know how to move through the world and so is occupied by the world, the very strange world, with visitations of odd strange men either from outer space or in our natural world and are asked odd questions. And sort of the questions that I think you want to be asked when you're alone, but also the frightening questions, I think all of the men that appear in these short stories are manifestations of the horrors and fears of what it means to be a woman in modern day Japan, but also the deep dark demons, I guess, that appear when you're really lonely. She was hollowed out by lost memories of youth. She could neither laugh nor cry. She was just a vacant living being. And I think in each of the stories, the female protagonist tries to find kind of, some kind of solace within herself, some kind of meaning in order to be alive. And there's always this bittersweet finding in every story, no matter how strange. As strange as Salmon Row in the sky, um, time traveling, or aliens, or AI, um, robots. It's uh, really fascinating. Everything is the beginning and the end. A single moment is simultaneously a billion years. Start and end are one. There's no past, no present, no future. This is eternity. Knowing infinity is discovering your own universe, your own God. And that's a quote that sort of explains the existential nature that also appears in the stories while also speaks to Izumi's potential drug use. I don't know, I'm pretty sure Pretty sure she uh, she did some pharmaceuticals because there's a story in here, four pages long, called After Everything that is just so strange. It was almost as if she was on hallucinogens when she wrote it and conceived it because it's just so, so strange. Like the imagery within it is very odd. Like just to give you a taste, here are the three first lines. Snakes emerge from the ocean. The hard sky glitters a deep uniform blue. Beneath its massive perfect dome, deformed snakes like antedilivans life forms crawl up onto the land. What, is, what the hell is going on there? Yeah, there's just this strange, wondrous nature and quality to all of the stories in here that made me turn around and think, wow, this is actually some, some good shit. Like, Izumi is so, so slept on. If you are a fan of Murakami, but want the female gaze from a female writer through female protagonists, Hit Parade of Tears is the way to go. Yeah, they're, they're just like super sly, super sexy, deep and dark 
doesn't lean too far into sci-fi so if you're afraid of sci-fi and want some like light sci-fi this is also perfect yeah it's just sort of weird in that japanese kind of way some of that japanese lit out there really weird no exception and i i love this so much i think i might reread it or like go back to some of the short stories in here because they're they're like fun odd there's a whimsy in it as well like you know Izumi is having fun when she's writing this. Finish that at the park. And then, on the way home, I stopped by a bakery. I got this, like, yakisoba sandwich. Anyone? Crayon Shinchan? And I also got a chocolate korone. I've been thinking about this bread for a little while because of this YouTuber. His name is Pino. And he's Korean but lives in Tokyo. And I just love his vlogs. They're, like, super cozy. There's just like this very lived in, natural, cute nature to his vlogs. Like all of his furniture is Muji, ceramics, and very light woods. And there are subtitles, which is nice, but it's a good way for me to practice Japanese, Korean. And yeah, I just love that as well. Good content, but it's just like very like daily vlogs. And I just love him. And anyway, he's obsessed with this bread. And now I've, taken over the obsession. Mukbang, shall we? I've got some time. I'm finished talking about the book. I'll leave y'all with a with a bite. Why not? Anyway, oh, I forgot to talk about what it is exactly, but it's essentially chocolate cream, like a shoe cream, inside this like fun spirally bread. And it's just like light and fun. I love like just peeling off the bread like this. And it's just like, look, the bread's got a tail. Look at that. Isn't that cute? Anyway, I'm gonna bite from this end. Mm-hmm. Exactly what I wanted. We'll say, these are a lot better in Japan. Just like they know how to do the bread right. Bread here, it's okay. Pairs well with the coffee though. Anyway, I'm gonna finish this. The rest of this Saturday afternoon is too hot to be outside, so I'm just gonna chill. Finish this Pinot vlog, eat this bread, and yeah. If you enjoyed this review, please consider picking it up through my affiliate link. I'm a proud Blackwells affiliate. Blackwells offers free shipping worldwide, and I love that. Also, reasonably priced books. If not this, then pick up my book, Adolescence Leaves, in the link below. I'm the author of Adolescence Leaves, a story trapped between Los Angeles and Tokyo. Why am I holding it? Why am I holding this as if this is my book? Do I? I don't have a copy near me, but it's about memory and loss in between Los Angeles and Tokyo in a sort of fragmentary verse style. So if you enjoy that, if that sounds yummy to you, gobble it up, gobble it up. Links downstairs. Anyway, thanks for hanging out with me. This is a vlog around. Love y'all. As always, be well. Do good work, keep in touch. Nuggets from McDonald's that are leftovers.